Today's scripture comes from Acts 2, 43, through chapter 3, verse 10. Awe came upon everyone, and because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, they spent as much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with a glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon, and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and astonishment at what had happened to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. We're going to start by playing a game this morning. Would you rather... Anybody know Would You Rather? If you don't, there's some seasonal examples to get you kind of warmed up. Would you rather tell ghost stories by a bonfire or in a spooky basement? Oh, bonfire. Okay, yeah, me too. Because at least you could have s'mores, right? Would you rather have the ability to cast spells or have an invisibility cloak? Invisibility cloak. Okay. Would you rather be a werewolf or a vampire? Okay, Mick, we're mixed on that one. All right, so you've got the gist. If you didn't know it before, now you do. Here's the real question. Would you rather have a million dollars or one penny? Wait. The penny multiplies every day for 31 days. When I went to the enrichment center on Friday, and ask this, I didn't even get to the penny part. I just said, a million dollars? I mean, I, I, I couldn't even breathe. And they said, a million dollars, yes, we want it. It's true for all of us, right? So uh, which one is worth more? The penny. It is worth over $10 million after a month of multiplying. The economics professor writing in Forbes magazine explains, the lesson of the magic penny invest early. But if you think about it, there are other lessons as well, such as if anyone asks you to give them some of your money and they say, I'm going to double it for you, walk away as soon as you can. The book of Acts is like the multiplication of the magic penny. Or to use a more fitting example, the loaves and the fish. Through the witness and faith of the apostles, a few believers turned into many. Communities in a very small place spread with the good news and the church all over the world. Common people become preachers and apostles and witnesses and ambassadors. There are miraculous prison breaks The lame walk and the blind see, the hungry are fed. And it's all part of this new community based in the love of God through Jesus Christ. 
It is because of this story in Acts that we are here today. In Acts, the gospel spreads to those outside the Jewish community, to the Gentiles, to the whole world. And it is declared, we believe that it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved. We are the inheritors of this incredible gift that is multiplied and multiplied over centuries. Through the church of Jesus Christ, millions and millions have come to faith and salvation and the healing love and power of Jesus Christ. Hospitals and clinics have saved lives. Lives have been transformed. People who have, no, who have nothing have hope because someone, because of their faith, is there for them. Right here on our campus, survivors of human trafficking. North Carolina is number eight in the nation for human trafficking. Survivors of human trafficking receive legal and other support services in a place that is so safe and inviting they can hear children playing on the playground. Because of the love of Jesus Christ, lives are saved and changed forever. As many of you have, I have witnessed the love of Jesus Christ and his power through miraculous treatments and recoveries and also finding comfort and peace even in the midst of death. We are the beneficiaries of the grace of Jesus Christ through the generosity of others. Several months ago, um, as we were discovering that we had some mold in a storage, some storage areas in the basement and sanctuary building, um, a friend of Millbrook came into a large sum of money. This person is familiar with all of our ministries and felt the call to God to give that money to us to help us to remediate and restore. The person says this, I feel strongly that Millbrook, in order to do God's work outside the church, needs a safe place to worship and work. The members of the church are nurtured and equipped by the church to go outside the church to do God's will that's what the early apostles and witnesses and believers did. They went outside. That particular generous investment in our ministry, not just our space, allows us to be nurtured to go out into the world. How has the love and grace of Jesus Christ changed your life? You wouldn't be here if it hadn't. It changed my life by providing me with a loving community of adults that reached out in care to me when I was in high school after a tumultuous early adolescence. They helped me to be healed. That is what the church did for me. The church has also helped me, and I know many of you, when the unthinkable happens. My friend Kelly lived just a couple of doors down when we were in the little town of Spruce Pine where I lived when we went to high school. She, uh, her birthday is one day after mine, and we shared a friend group, and we often had shared birthday parties. It was the gift of faith that got me through when I was a junior in high school and just weeks before her 20th birthday I got the call that she had been brutally murdered. And it was the words of my campus minister when I was completely distraught. He said, Jesus is always with us. Jesus came and died even the worst possible death. Kelly was not alone. 
It was the gift of faith that led her mother to begin a ministry called Mending Hearts, where she reached out to other mothers who were grieving. And it is only by the gift of faith that any of us who loved her can have any measure of grace with the person who took her life in such a cruel way. Because it is faith in Jesus who is the one who said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. All of this and more than we could ever name is possible because of the church of Jesus Christ, the church that began in Acts. This is the story of generosity over and over. It is the multiplication of love. When we think of Acts, I think most of us think of the miracles. We think of the boldness of faith, maybe the martyrs, the witness and the work. But I'm not sure how often we think about the way that the believers, as an act of faith, shared their possessions. We heard it in Acts 2, and it's repeated and expanded in Acts 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and a great grace was among them all. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds and laid it at the disciples of the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need." They brought what they had, and it was shared and multiplied to meet the needs of many. I included the healing story in Acts 3 in our scripture lesson today because, A, it's just so beautiful. It's such a beautiful story. And B, this one line stood out to me as I read it earlier this week. It's verse 6. Peter says, I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. Now, because we heard Acts 2, we know that any possessions that Peter had, he'd already given them to the church. And we know from the Gospels that Peter was a fisherman. He was humble in his means to begin with. And remember what he did when Jesus went along the shore and said, come and follow me? He put down his nets. He put down his security, his livelihood. He gave everything to follow Jesus. But think what he received. He received the healing power of Jesus Christ. And in the story of Acts, he shares it over and over and over, and it's shared even to us today. It is this power to stand up and walk that has been healing in my life and in yours. This healing power is not a reward. It's not a reward for our giving or our goodness. It's not a reward for our works. It is a free gift given to us so that we then can freely give. It helps us, it frees us to be generous with our resources, with our service, with our love, with our forgiveness with our own grace. That's how love is multiplied. Let's go back to the magic penny for a minute. The truth, I was a little disappointed to find an economics object lesson when I did a search earlier this week for the legend of the magic penny. Now, unless you know the song, that won't make sense to you, so hang on just a second. I was hoping for a children's story where a little speck of love becomes pixie dust and covers everyone, all the land, and they all start sharing and loving and forgiving. You know, like it goes in the song. 
Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. It's just like a magic penny, hold it tight and you won't have any. Lend it, spend it and you'll have so many, it'll roll all over the floor. For love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you'll end up having more. Love <laughs> multiplied. But in the end, I think the econ example actually makes the spiritual lesson even stronger than if we had read a children's book. Love is like the magic penny that multiplies and multiplies and multiplies in a way that far exceeds what's even possible in the economic world. And that is the story of the church at its best. Love given to us by God from the beginning made tangible as a coin you can hold in your hand, wait, better, as the hand of your closest loved one that you can hold because God's love became flesh and dwelt among us. And that love has spread and multiplied to something even more valuable than $10 million. And the more that we live in that love, the more we want to share it. And the more we share it, the more we live in it. And love is multiplied over and over and over. Let's sing it together now.